Okay, now we're gonna start with the new chapter, um, the section 4.1. It's extrema on an interval. Extrema is basically referred to either maximum or minimum. Okay. So first of all, we will try to understand the definition of extremas of a function on an interval. Understand the definition of relative extrema of a function on an open interval. Find extrema on a closed interval. Okay. Extrema, extrema of, a, of a function. Again, it's a extrema is also referred to maximum or minimum. function. In calculus, we devote a lot of effort to determine the behavior of function f on an open on the interval i. Does f of have a maximum values on, on the interval i or does it have a minimum value on it on the interval i? And why is the function increasing? Why is the function decreasing? In this chapter we we learn how derivative could be used to answer these questions. So first of all, let's take a look at the definition of the extremas. That will be defined on the interval i containing c. If f of c is the minimum of f on i, meaning f of c is the smallest value, smallest y value, On interval i, then f of c is minimum. So if f of c is largest value y value i, then it's a maximum. f of c is a maximum. The minimum and maximum of a function on a on an interval, I have extremal values or extrema. The singular form of extrema is extremum. Extremum. Of the function on the interval, the minimum and maximum of function on the interval are also called absolute ma minimum, absolute maximum. You can also say that global minimum or global maximum. They are the, they are the same term, right? Absolute minimum, absolute maximum. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at two graphs, okay, with the same function f of x equals to x squared plus 1. The left graph, it's a closed interval from negative 1, which is negative 1, to 2. It's 2. Okay. On this closed interval, as you can see, right, we see a minimum here, so minimum occurs here. Maximum occurs here. So the, for this closed interval, both have a both absolute maximum and a minimum occur. If you look at the, the graph on the right, now it's on a on an open interval. This is open interval, meaning we're not including the endpoints. So that's why we have circle here on the endpoint. You can see we only have a minimum curse here, right? At zero one. So no maximum, right? Only minimum. Only absolute minimum curve. Okay, so that's the difference between an open and a closed interval. And let's take a look at this graph really quick. Figure 3.1. If you look at it, this is a piecewise function. Um, g of x equals x squared plus 1 when x is not equal to 0. When g of x equals 2 when x is equal to 0. So that's why we have a circle here. We have a solid point at 0, 2, right? 
And if you if you look at it, in this case, our minimum occurs here actually, right? However, this this circle here is not a minimum. So the so maximum we know that occurs here. A minimum does not occur here. Okay, not a minimum. In this case, for the piecewise function, we only have a absolute maximum. So based on the three examples, um, we know that if f of is continuous on a closed interval, square bracket a comma b square bracket then f have both a minimum and a maximum on the interval. This is not a so the example just went over. This is not a differentiable function because it's not continuous at x equals zero, right? So it's not different. It's not continuous function. Then it's not differentiable. So if it's continuous, f is continuous on a closing interval, then guarantee that's a absolute maximum and absolute minimum on the interval. This is an extreme value theorem under the condition that the function f is continuous. F is continuous. On a close interval, maybe. Okay, so next thing, let's take a look at relative extrema and then critical values. Based on the term, relative extrema is, is referred to relative minima. And relative maxima. So let's take a look at this graph. This is a typical graph which has a hill and a valley. And this, this is a typical hill, that's a typical valley. Okay. So in this case, f of x equals x cubed plus minus 3x squared, that's a function, has a relative maximum at a 0, 0. So this is what they call relative maximum. And this is what they call relative minimum. And there's no, since the graph go up and down forever, so there's no absolute maximum or minimum. Okay, so informally you can, for continuous function, you can think of a relative minima as a occurring on a hill, on a graph. And whenever you have a hill, hill shape of the graph, then you have a relative maximum and relative minimum occur, as occurring in a valley on a graph. So whenever you see a valley, then you have a relative minimum. So such a hill or valley could, could occur in two ways. If the hill is smooth or if a hill or valley is smooth and rounded, the graph has a horizontal tangent line at a high at a high point or a low point. If the hill or valley is sharp and then peaked, the graph represents a function that is not differentiable at a high point or low points like this, right? So this is not differentiable, not differentiable. This is like the sharp, right, sharp point, sharp case. 
or picked something like this is not differentiable neither okay so not differentiable case and here like that very that right here this is very okay so for different scenario so for here on the value you have a horizontal tangent if you if the here value is sharper and picked then the graph represent a function not differentiable okay so let's take a look at the definition of relative extrema so if there's an open interval containing c on which f of c is a maxima f of c is called relative maxima of f you can say that has relative maxima at c comma f of c and remember this is the open interval case okay so second one if there's an open interval again it's open interval containing c f of c is a minimum f of c is called relative minimum of f if you can see you can say that f has a relative minimum at parenthesis c comma f of c the plural of relative min maxima is relative maxima plural of relative minima is relative minima relative maxima and relative minima are sometimes called local maxima or local minima and the other one is global and this one is local okay when the value of the derivative of each relative extrema shown in figure 3.3 and first one relative minimum relative maxima occurs at 3 2 at point 3 2 second graph f of x equals absolute value of x that's relative minima occurs at zero zero and the third graph is a sine function so relative maxima occurs pi over two comma one and relative minima occurs at a three pi over two and negative one okay as you can see this is a it's horizontal tangent here right it's horizontal tangent here slope of tangent line equals zero because tangent line at that point at both here and then valley is equal to zero okay now here this is not differentiable mm. not differentiable slope of tangent line does not exist so first of all we in order to solve this, we gotta find the derivative of this f of x. Okay. Now x squared three over x cubed. In this case, f is equal to nine times x squared minus three, so it's nine x squared minus twenty-seven. So f prime equals to eighteen x minus zero, which is just eighteen x. Okay. And g equals to x cubed. So g prime equals 3x squared. Then we apply the quotient rule. Prime g minus f g prime over g squared. Okay. So f prime, which is 18x, times g, which is x cubed, minus f, which is 9x squared, that's 27. g prime, which is 3x squared, over s cubed squared. Now we just gotta kind of simplify this. We have 18x to the fourth minus 27x to the fourth plus 81x squared over x to the sixth. So now we have a negative 9x to the fourth plus 81x squared over x to the sixth. And you can reduce every single term by x squared, so we end up with 9x squared plus 81 over x to the fourth. Okay, then you set this equals zero and then solve for so set negative nine x squared plus eighty one 
four x to the fourth equals zero, and so four x. In this case, we have negative nine x squared. plus 81 equals 0, so simplify that x squared minus 9 equals 0, so x equals to plus minus 3. Okay, and uh, so when x equals 3, the y value f of 3 equals to 9 times 3 squared minus 3, over 3 cube so that's going to be 9 times 6 over 27 which gives us reduce it becomes 2 so 3 2 that's why we have a bracket maximum there okay At x equals 0, the derivative of f of x equals absolute value of x does not exist because one side limit does not equal to the other side. So, left hand side we get a limit which is negative 1, right hand side limit. Right hand side limit equals positive 1. So, two limit does not equal to each other. So. Um, derivative does not exist at that point at x equals zero. Okay, so it's not differentiable. Last one, um, derivative of f of x is prime of x equals to derivative of sine x becomes cosine x. And set equals zero. Let's see if set cosine x equals zero. X is either equal to power two or three power two within the first period, right? And that's why um, relative maximum occurs power two one. And right maximum minimum occurs at a three power of two and negative one. Okay. Once you figure out the critical numbers, and this is the critical numbers. Um, notice that the derivative either in each relative extremal case, the derivative either is a zero or does not exist. So the x value at this special point are called critical values, critical numbers. Okay. Um, the following are two typical um, critical numbers. One well, first one is called horizontal tangent. So critical numbers either occurs at when you have horizontal tangent line. Either a valley or hill. Second one is a derivative a prime of c. Derivative of that point does not exist. Meaning, slope or tangent line at that point does not exist. Slope or tangent line. does not exist at x equals c. So two cases when you have a critical numbers. Okay. So definition of a critical number, they have to be defined as c. A prime of c equals zero, or if f is not differentiable at x at x equals c, 
and sees the critical number of function of x. Relative extreme are only at the critical numbers. So if f of relative minimum or relative maximum at x or c, then c must be a critical number of f. Okay. So critical number critical values only occur at the at the critical numbers. Finding extreme on the closed interval. So there are four general steps. To find the extrema of a continuous function f on a closed interval, square brackets a comma b, square bracket use the following step. First step, find the critical numbers of f in open interval a, b. And second step, evaluate f at each critical number in a, b, in the open interval a, b, a comma b. Third step, evaluate f at each endpoint of closed interval, square bracket a comma b, square bracket and the least of these values is the minimum the greatest is the maximum okay so basically including all critical numbers and endpoints and check all the y values correspond to each one of them it's all critical numbers and endpoints And then compare and compare my value correspond to each one of them. Corresponding to each. And then the smallest value is the minimum. And the largest value is the maximum. So let's take a look at this concrete example. Find the extrema of f of x equals 3x to the fourth minus 4x squared, 4x cubed on the closed interval um, negative 1, comma 2. So first of all, find the derivative using the power rule, right? 3 times 4 and reduce the power by 1. Minus 4 times 3, reduce the power by 1. So we got 12x to the cube minus 12x squared. Now we factor this, we get 12x squared, x minus 1. And we use zero factor property. So setting 12x squared equals 0, setting x minus 1 equals 0. We solve 12x squared equals 0, x squared equals 0, x equals 0. Second one, adding 1 from both sides, x equals 2. So that two critical numbers. They both inside, a, they both belong to closing the one I want to okay that means we gotta check four things right first thing we're gonna check both uh, both critical numbers so one x equals zero f of zero equals to three times zero to the fourth minus four times zero to the third which is zero zero minus zero zero second one x equals one so f of 1 equals 3 times 1 to the 4th minus 4 times 1 to the 3rd, which is 3 minus 4, and we 1. Third one is the end point, right? The left end point, x equals negative 1. So f of negative 1 equals 3 times negative 1 to the 4th minus 4 times negative 1 to the 3rd. So here we have a 3, negative 1 to the 4th becomes 1. Negative 1 to the third becomes negative 1. Now we have 3. Negative 4 times negative 1 becomes 4. 7. Okay. The last one we're going to check the right end point. X equals 2. Now f of 2 equals to 3 times 2 to the fourth minus 4 times 2 to the third. 
So which is 3 times 16 minus 4 times 8. So it's 48 minus 32, which gives us 16. And now you compare all the y values. Right? So since this one, 16 is the maximum, then that's your relative. That's your relative maximum. That's your maximum. And this one is the absolute maximum. Okay. So So the absolute maximum occurs at at a two sixteen and relative absolute minimum occurs at negative one is smallest value, so it's one negative one. Okay. So by doing for this procedure, uh, you'll be able to find out both both extremes. Okay. It's just a repeat of what we have, and by using the table, some summarize what we. We have done so far, right? Find left end point, critical values, critical second critical values, right end point, and compare all the y values. And eventually, you find that the absolute maximum this is absolute because of 216, and an absolute minimum occurs at 191. Just like what we did, and the graph confirms. What we discover. <coughs> and as you notice that critical value when x equals two does not e either yield yield a relative maxima or relative minima, and that's totally normal. This tells tells you that the converse of theorem three point two is not true. In other words, the critical numbers of a function may not produce either maximum or minimum. May not produce the extremers. Okay. Thank you.